Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to look at how to get the motion capture out of motion builder and onto your character in Maya. Before you can export your animation from motion builder you need to make sure everything's been plotted to the joints in your character. So if you've been editing on the control rig, the animation will only exist on the control rig. So although this character looks like it's animated with keyframes, if we stop this and select one of the joints in our character, we come down into the F curve window, we can see there's no keyframes on the anim layer 1 or on the base layer. This means if we export this file now without plotting any animation onto the joints, the animation won't be applied to your character when you import it into Max or Maya. So the first thing we need to do is plot this animation from the control rig onto our character. When you plot from the control rig to the character, the keyframes are applied to all the joints that are listed down here in your character. So if you look in the mapping list column, any of these joints in here, this is where the animation is going to get plotted. So if you didn't set up this characterization, you can check where the animation is going to be plotted by looking in here. So there are two ways to plot the animation from the control rig. The first one is down here using plot character and just hit skeleton to so bring up the plot options window. Just cancel that. Second one is up here in the character controls. You can come down here to bake plot bake plot to skeleton. We'll just bring up the plot options window. It's so plot and frame make sure the data is plotted to exact frame. So this is going to resample the animation at the selected frame rate and set a keyframe on each frame of the animation. Plot all takes will plot the data for every take in your scene. We're going to leave this turned off for now so it only plots the data to the current take. So you do need to be careful when using plot all takes especially if you've been editing on the control rig like I have here because Motion Builder is going to use the same settings that you've got in your current take to plot the animation to the rest of the takes. So for example if I had this animation on a skeleton let me just copy that into a new take. If I then go back to our original take plot the animation to a control rig. You can see in this take the animation works fine but if we switch to the take that we just copy the animation to because there's no animation on the control rig this character is going to be static. So if we then use plot all takes. When we come back to this take, it's because the control rig stationary has overwritten the original animation with the stationary animation from the control rig. So although our original file does work because the animation was on the control rig, the other take that didn't have animation plotted to the control rig is completely static. If I was working on this file I'd imported some other animation onto this character and then plotted all takes with the control rig still active without having the animation plotted to the control rig. That would have just overwritten all that animation. I'd have to import the take again. So you do have to be careful when you're using plot all takes. So like I say, we're going to leave plot takes turned off. So next option is plot rate. So this lets you specify what frame rate to use when you're plotting the animation for your character. So normally the plot rate is the same as your frames per second down here in the transport controls. It's actually displayed at the side here, so you'd leave this at 30 frames a second. So if you're editing raw mocap data that was captured at a higher frame rate, you can use the plot rate to downsample the animation. So for example, if this was captured at 120 frames a second, you could use a plot rate to resample it back down to 30 frames a second. One thing to be aware of when you're doing this though is, ideally you should be resampling the data at a frame rate that's a multiple of the original capture frame rate. So for example, if you captured at 120 frames a second, you could resample at 24, 30, 60, but not 25, because that wouldn't give you a full frame. So the reason for this is, if we look at the keys on this character, if you resampled a, a different frame rate, rather than getting one of the captured frames, which we'll pretend this was captured at 30 frames a second, rather than getting one of these captured frames, what you'll get is a point along this F curve, which rather than being captured by the system is sort of estimated or interpolated between two points on the F curve. This becomes really important if you want to slow the data down, especially on something like a fight or a fall where you want to see all the impact and all the shake and judder. If you're getting an interpolation along this F curve, it's going to really smooth that action out. You don't get a full sense of the impact. So we're going to leave this at 30 frames a second. So the next one to look at are rotation filters. This file doesn't really show that off, but I can come down here into Asset Browser and Previous Moves. If we just grab this jumping back kick, let's open this. So in here we've got this animation of this character that's jumping up, turning around and kicking. So if we just quickly plot this to a control rig. If we now plot this back to the skeleton, I can show you what these different rotation filters do. 
So if I apply none, plot that back. If we select the hips on the character, come down into the F curves window and rotations, frame all. You can see on the Z rotation, there's this big jump. So this is caused by gimbal lock or gimbal flip. So you can see here when you play through it frame by frame, it looks fine. If we take snap on frames off, and look at this here, you'll see there's a crazy spin between these two frames. So if we go back to our control rig and turn it back on, so if we now plot this and use Gimbal Killer, so what Gimbal Killer will do is it'll try to compensate for that gimbal flip or lock that you could see in the keyframes there by adding extra keyframes to the rotation in the F curves to try and stop the wobble and the spin. So if we now go back into the F curves and look at that same section of animation, we can see here you've now got extra keyframes between the main keyframes. So you now have these keyframes at a sub keyframe level. So it's giving us all these extra keyframes, but it does sort out that wobble that we were seeing earlier. The only problem is we now have a lot of extra keyframes that we don't really want. And also, if we shift right click a joint in the character, select all the joints, and then we just select all the animation. I'm just going to right click and select all. If I scale this out now, so if you wanted to retime this, so you wanted to do some kind of matrix style slow-mo kick. If we deselect that, if we play this animation back now, what you can start to see on the feet is as he jumps that wobble still exists. You see a little wobble there. So although it gets rid of it while you're playing back at 30 frames a second, if you had to rescale that animation you see it still has that wobble in it. And we're also left with all these extra additional keyframes that we don't really want. So Final option, we just reapply our animation, pay that to the skeleton, is the unroll filter. So the unroll filter will try and unroll the Euler rotations to remove the flips and wobbles that we've just seen. So it doesn't actually create any additional keyframes this time. What it tries to do is smooth the curves out to one continuous F curve. So if we plot that down now, it'll make more sense when you see it. We can go back into our F curves window. So now if we look at that curve, you can see now it all makes sense. It's not messed up any of the other channels. We've now got a keyframe. If I just put snap on frames back on, you can see it's not generated any extra keyframes. And we've lost that strange wobble that we were getting earlier. And then the same as before, we control shift right click the skeleton, select all the joints, and select all the translation and rotation channels. Right click, select all. Let me rescale the animation again. If we now come in and look at those feet as it does the spin again. You can see as it comes up it doesn't have that wobble that we had using the gimbal killer. So the animation still looks fine. So the next option is constant key reducer. So constant key reducer reduces the number of keyframes on an object by deleting keyframes that have the same value. So this can be useful for reducing file sizes. So for example, if I plot this now without key reducer turned on, and then we look at the values on this elbow, we can see in the rotation channels, it's got keyframes on the X, Y, and Z channels, even though that X and the Y channels don't actually change, they stay at zero. So if you were to export this, you're actually exporting keyframes that you don't really need, which can make your file sizes bigger. So what we can do is, if we turn the control rig back on and then plot to character, this time we set constant key reducer on. I'll come back to keep at least one keyframe in a minute. If we put constant key reducer on and then plot that back to the skeleton, then this time when we look at the elbows, because they're only rotating in one axis, and there's no keyframes on the X or Y channels, then they're only on the Z channel. So not having data on these two channels can help reduce the file size. So you can see now on any joint that rotates only in one axis, so like the other elbow, you can see down here, because this key's not because this K is not red, means it doesn't have any keyframes. So you can see here there's no keyframes on those channels, and the same with the knees. This K isn't red, so there's no keyframes on them. You can see there's just keyframes on the Z channels. So that'll save us two channels of data 
per limb on four limbs. That can help make your file sizes smaller. But you also need to be careful when you're using constant key reducer. So for example in this animation there's no animation on the fingers on this so if I leave constant key reducer turned on and then plot that to the skeleton we now look in the F curves if we select these finger joints now you can see they have no animation on them at all so it's deleted all of the keyframes because they ha don't have any animation on them so that's where keep at least one keyframe comes in so what this does is it leaves one keyframe on the object when the constant key reducer is used so the keyframe is usually set on the first frame of the animation so if we just plot this back now and then we have a look at the F curves on those fingers now you can see there's a keyframe on frame 0 so this gives you much more reliable results when you're in important animation also avoids the joints accidentally being reset if you had to put your character in a T pose so for instance if I put Jess into a stance pose you can see the fingers go straight if I turn this off you see the fingers go back to the relaxed hand pose but if I was to turn off keep at least one keyframe plot this back to the character if I now had to reset my character back into stance pose for whatever reason because there's now no keyframes on the fingers when I reset this you can see we lose that relaxed hand pose from the animation so the next option is smart plot this will let you plot animation without adding any extra keyframes so smart plot you only really need to use if you've actually hand keyed something and you just want to keep the same number of keyframes when you plot the animation down so we've not really done this this is all motion capture so there's a keyframe on every frame so we can leave that turned off and the final one is plot translation on root only so this pretty much does exactly what it says on the label so make sure translation is only plotted at the hips of the character and all the rest of the joints will just be rotation so if we set this now to plot on a frame 30 frames a second using the unroll filter constant key reducer turn on we're going to keep at least one keyframe we're going to make sure we plot translation on the root only now if we plot that down we select the root object and come into F curves you can see it has translation values and rotation values there's no weird gimbal flips or anything so if we select another joint in the character you can see this doesn't have any translation values just rotation values so once the animations finished being plotted Motion Builder will automatically turn off the character. So now it's just the animation on the joint data moving our character. So you can just scrub this through and make sure it's plotting correctly. So if there are objects in your character that weren't part of the characterization but do need to be plotted before you export them, you can just come into Control W into the schematic view, frame all, and then just come across to our Jess character. So for this example, we're going to pretend the animation wasn't plotted to roll joint in a leg. So to plot this animation, we're going to come down into F curves. And we're going to select the properties that we want plotting. So in this case, it's translation and rotation. We're going to come to animation and do plot selected. So this will plot any objects you have selected. And then the selected properties, which we've just selected in the F curves window. Hit plot. That's going to bring up our plot selected properties window. So in here, we've already got these options set. So you can hit plot, that will go through and plot the translation and rotation values onto that object. So this kind of plotting is also handy if you've got custom properties you need to plot. So if you look on here we have a custom property. So we can select that, come back across here, do plot selected selected properties, plot again. There's no actual animation on here but if there was it would actually plot the animation onto that custom property. So if your character has custom properties that need plotting before they go back into Maya, this is a great way to do that. So now we're sure we have all our animation plotted, we can control W back into the perspective view, and we can get our file ready to export. So before we make any changes to this, we're going to file save as. So we just add edit to this name. This will just give a point we can return to if the import doesn't work. So in here we're going to save all elements, we're going to save all animation, we're going to save all settings, we're going to make sure our takes are saved, and just hit save. So now we can start getting the file ready for exporting. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our source character. So for this we can use Shift N, and then we're going to select everything in the source namespace. So we enter source, colon, and then a star. So that's just going to select everything in this source namespace. Click OK. 
Now to delete this, you can't just hit delete on the keyboard because it doesn't actually delete all the objects. So we're going to come down here into our scene browser and then find the objects that's selected, which is a root. We're going to right click that and do delete and confirm. And then just OK, delete character, yes to all. So that's going to delete everything in that source namespace. So as I said, when you're setting your characters up, it is always good to use a namespace. So the next thing we're going to do is delete our control rig. So you can select that and just do detach control rig and then delete. So that just leaves us with our character. This is the floor plane the light I put in for rendering, so you can get rid of those. So that just leaves us with our character in here. So now we can just check our animation still works. That character's still moving. So we can control W into the schematic view. So if you rescale your character when you brought it into Motion Builder, this is where you have to rescale it back to the original size. So if you select the reference joint and hit S to go into scale, this character wasn't scaled. But if it was, the first thing you need to do is go into the F curves window and make sure there are no keyframes on the scale value. Because if there are, if you scale your character down, as soon as you play that animation back, it's going to pop back up to its original size. So you need to make sure there are no keyframes on the reference. So you can come up into animation, clear selected all properties. That's just going to clear the animation and anything you've got selected. So now you can see there's no pop on that. And if we scale that character back down, it stays at that size. So then if we were scaling the character down, we can hit A to frame the character and just have a look and make sure that animation still plays back correctly. I don't actually want to scale that character down, so I'm going to put it back to 1 and hit A to frame all again. Check animation still works. So the last thing we'll need to do is change the name of our take so that it makes sense. So at the moment this is still set to female, so you can come down here to takes, double click that, and then in here we can just double click the take name, and then change this to Jess. So that we know this is on our Jess character, what type of action it is, and whether she's got a prop. And then the final thing we can do is come up here and we can do file, save as, and then we'll take this edit version and change the name and we'll call this processed. So we know this is the final processed file. So we have our edit. If we need to go back and change anything, this is going to be our process file that we're going to import into Maya. And we can hit save. And we're going to save all elements, save all animation, save all settings, save the takes, and hit save. Now, so we can jump back across to our character opened in Maya. We can file, import, then go to our exported file. So this is our processed file. Then down here we can change our file type to FBX. And in here we can set our import options. Similar to before, we can set this to Autodesk Motion Builder. And this will change most of the settings that we need. First thing we're going to change is file content. We want to update animation. So if you use add, this will bring in the character and add it to the scene. Add and update will add any objects that the importer can't find and update the animation on objects that it can find. Update the animation just updates the animation on the objects. So we're going to select that. And then in animation, we make sure animation's turned on. We make sure we've got the correct take set. We've only got one take in our file. So that's fine. We're going to turn on fill timelines. This will just make sure that the timeline's set to the correct range that we want. We don't want to bake any animation layers. We don't have any optical markers. We're going to leave we're turning in interpolation mode, we're going to leave as Euler. We have no driven keys. We're not bringing any deformer models in. We can turn off cameras, because we don't want any cameras from the scene. We don't want any of the lights from the scene. And then we can hit Import. That's going to import our animation into Maya. You can see our timeline's now changed to fit the animation. Our character's jumped into the first position. We have a warning here, which we can ignore. So now we can play the file back and just make sure everything's imported correctly. So there you have it, a complete end-to-end -end workflow showing you how to get your character from Maya into Motion Builder, characterize it, apply some motion capture to it, and then get it back into Maya. I'll leave a link to the full playlist in the description below. Hope you found this series useful. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button, and subscribe if you want to see what tutorials come next.